uh, today I'm going to be just showing you guys how to do the uh, trick, the transporting card trick I showed a couple days ago. Well, actually, I'm not sure when I'm going to upload this, but in the past I've uploaded an original trick, and I got lots of feedback, and people were saying that it was really awesome, and they wanted a tutorial for it. Um, and some people noticed I used an invisible deck because they have one, but a lot of people told me that they didn't have invisible decks, and they 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 can't buy one right now. So if you can't do that, I'm going to show you how to do that trick without an invisible deck. Um, but I highly recommend you get one. You can buy them off of like PenguinMagic.com, a whole bunch of different stores. I highly recommend you get it. But today I'm going to show you the performance and the tutorial for how to do it without the invisible deck. Because later on I'm going to do tutorials just for the invisible deck. So later on I'll show you how to do the trick using that deck. So I need you to keep an eye on this deck because I have made a prediction already. Before I even started the trick I've already made a prediction. So I need you to make sure that deck isn't tampered with. And with this deck over here, I'm going to shuffle it up because in the future you're going to just select a random card from the deck. Okay, So I'm just going to make sure this deck is really shuffled up. I don't want this card to be anything but random so I'm going to do one more shuffle. And I'll give the cards a cut like this. Just give them a quick cut. So you can see this is a very random deck, whatever card, uh, whatever card you're going to pick is going to be random. So all I'm going to do is riffle down the side, you're going to tell me when to stop, and you're going to pick your card. So here we go. Stop right there. So you stop me anywhere in the deck, and you stop me right here at the Ten of Diamonds. So I'm going to set that right over here so you can keep an eye on that. And my prediction that I made is right here. I knew you were going to pick the Ten of Diamonds all along. Because here in this deck, there's one card that's face down, and believe it or not, it's your card, the Ten of Diamonds. Alright guys, hope you liked it, I'm about to show you the tutorial. Alright guys, now for the tutorial, whoa, that looks better, there we go, okay. Um, you're going to need two separate decks, and like I said, if you had an invisible deck, it'd be a lot easier to do. Later on, I'm going to do a tutorial for just the invisible deck, and I'll, and I'll explain how I did that with that deck, but a lot of people said they don't have one at the moment. I recommend you get one, but for now, I'll show you guys how to do it without the invisible deck. And everybody with an invisible deck obviously knows how I did the trick um, anyways. So, you're going to want two separate decks, and with one deck, you're going to pick out any random card, and you're going to pl place it face down in the deck. So here we use the ten of spades for that. Okay, so any random card face down in the deck, that's all you need. You put it away in a separate deck. That's all you're going to need there. And then with another deck, you're going to take this as well. And now you're going to find that same card. So in that case, it was the Ten of Spades that we put there. So let's look for the Ten of Spades in this deck. There it is, Ten of Spades. Okay, so what we're going to do with this card is put it right on top of the deck. So now we have the Ten right here on top of the deck. So now you go up to the spectator and you say, I need you to keep your eyes on this deck to make sure I'm not tampering with it or I'm not touching it. Um, and you can say, go ahead and hold this deck, make sure I'm not doing anything with it. So now they're holding onto this deck. And now what you can tell them is, you're going to say, all I have to do is shuffle up this deck. So when you pick a card, it's random because I have no, I don't want to know what this card is. And all you're going to do when you're shuffling up the deck is making sure that you're going to keep this ten of spades on top. That's your main goal. That's it. The rest of the deck doesn't matter. You just want to keep that ten of spades right on top. So the way I do that is when I riffle shuffle it, I place the cards down, and I just make sure I finish last with this hand. So I make sure the ten stays on top, just like that. You can also do false cuts. Um, I'm going to uh, show you how to do it right now, the swivel cut. You break off a portion, like a fifth of the deck, you place it in your hand like this, you just grab it over, and then you put to mechanics grip just like this, like you're holding your regular packet of cards. Then you break off about half of this deck, you take the bottom, you go diagonal, that way it's like this. That way it's diagonal. That way you should have, you see this little triangle right here? You want that there. That way, when you come back, you're going to use your ring finger and your thumb to grab the bottom, the bottom portion. So you're going to grab this packet on the bottom, you see that? With your ring in your thumb and you're gonna slide it out the bottom portion the bottom portion and then you're gonna take your thumb and pivot the top packet of cards 
onto this packet and then set that bottom right back on top and you're going to end with the ten of spades. Um, and the tutorial is very hard for that trick just because when you slow the move down you're not in your rhythm and sometimes you forget which packet is which so I'm going to show it in fast motion again. Break off the cards, put it in your hand, break this off, put a diagonal, to come over here with your ring and your thumb, grab the bottom out, slide it, pivot, put it back on top, and there's your ton of spades. And now what you want to do is you want to misdirect the spectator and say, now look, the, the, um, the entire deck is pretty much random, so I have no idea where any of the cards are. And as you saw right there, I did a pinky push off to get a pinky break. So I pushed forward and I pulled back. So I pushed forward. So as I'm talking to the spectator, they're not going to be noticing. You're going to move your hands a lot so they can't see you doing that. So basically, you take your thumb, you push it over your fingers, and you pull it back. And when you pull it back, you got a break. So you transfer that to a thumb break like this. You hold it with a thumb break. You take the bottom half, you're going to um, hold it like this, and then on, on, over here I'm just going to separate it with my pinky right there. So you take off the bottom half like this, transfer it to the top, now you still have a break, and then take everything from below the break, put it on top of the, on, put on top of the deck, and now you, their card is on the bottom. If you know another way to, to take the card to the bottom of the deck, go ahead, do that. It doesn't matter. As long as you know a way to get the card from the top to get to the bottom, you're all right. So that's the way I did it. I believe that's called a double undercut. Um, if, if I'm not right, uh, go ahead and comment below and tell me what that is. But I believe that's what it's called, and that's how I got the 10 to the bottom. So now what you're going to do is tell the spectator you're going to riffle down the side of the deck, and then when they say stop, um, you're going to force that card on them. So this is what you need to do. You need to get the deck like this, three fingers applying pressure to that 10. You want these, the middle, the ring, and the pinky, they're all applying lots of pressure. You have your knuckle here, that's what it looks like. This knuckle here, your pointer, is applying lots of pressure, so it's going to bend it. So you can do this. So now when, there's, when, now when you're riffling down and the spectator says stop, you're going to grab the, bo the bottom portion, but since you're applying pressure to the 10, the 10 is going to stay. You see that? The 10 is going to stay there. And now it looks like you stopped it where you told them to stop, which you did, but you held on to the 10. So one more time, I'm going to show you I did that. You grab it like this, you're going to bend the deck. You have your three fingers applying lots of pressure here. They're applying pressure to stick to that card. Your knuckles pushing in, so this is what it looks like, and you're going to riffle down. They say stop. You grab the bottom portion. Since you're applying pressure here, you just take the card out. So from the top, it looks like this. It doesn't look like anything, but their card is right there. Now it's called a slip force. Um, so now what you can do is flip over the deck. You show them here's their card. So you set their card over to the side. Push the deck over here. And you say, watch, I knew from the beginning that you were going to select that card. I'm going to show you right now. So then you take the deck. You just spread it out, and if you're standing up, you can spread it out in your hands, but if you're on a table, this is, it looks nice to do it like this, and they see the card. You grab their card from the deck, and you do like a flick or something, and you can show them it's the same card. Um, your spectators will be amazed. So, I really hope you guys like that trick, and as I said, later on, I'm going to do a tutorial with the invisible deck, and different tips and tricks for that, for the invisible deck also. Alright guys, thanks for watching.